Today is December 13th, and I'd uh, like to welcome you all to our meeting. So Ms. Nestor Jellen, would you please call the roll? Sure. John Enright Randolph. Bernie Garitas. Here. Jeff McKim. Here. D. Owens. Jerry Pittsburgh. Here. Julie Thomas. Jeff Morris. Here. Margaret Clements. Here. Okay, so we have five members in person and a quorum. Okay, and I know others will be coming in and we'll add them to the attendance as they arrive, but let's still get started. Uh, would you be so kind as to introduce the evidence? Sure. I'd like to introduce the following items into the evidence. The Monroe County Zoning Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Comprehensive Plan as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Subdivision Control Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Plan Commission Rules of Procedure as adopted and amended. And the cases that were legally advertised and scheduled for a hearing on tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve the evidence? Move, we second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the evidence. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Jeff McKim? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Jeff Morris? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Okay, uh, tonight's agenda has already been amended a little bit. We're going to first be having the uh, CDO public engagement session. The staff will go over uh, module two of the CDO, and this is under administrative business. So the uh, plan commission can ask uh, questions of staff and of the representative from Cincinnati, Liz. Uh, welcome, welcome. And uh, Liz Fields, and then uh, after we have that um, plan commission engagement session, then we will have uh, a public session outside for 15 minutes during our break, and then we'll get started with unfinished business. And the first item um, under unfinished business has been continued, That's and so we will move to new business. So that is the agenda as I propose it. Are there any changes or discussion, my dear colleagues? I'd like the record to reflect that two commissioners have arrived, Lee Jones and Julie Thomas. And I don't know if uh, D. Owens has arrived online. Okay, so let the record reflect that two of our commissioners are in attendance. Okay, so uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda with the amendment that the starts rezone from Ag RR to LB REZ-22-8 has been continued. Um, and I believe that's continued to March, 2023. Um, a vote in favor is a vote to approve the agenda as amended. Jeff McKim? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes, and we need a microphone back. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, Jeff Morris? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Okay, the motion carries six to zero. Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes from October 18th, 2022? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Jeff Morris? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Jeff McKim? Yes. Okay, motion carries six to zero. And let the record reflect that Mr. Tron Enright Randolph has arrived and is in attendance. Okay. Okay, well, we move on now to the item that many people here have come to hear, and that is the County Development Ordinance. I'd like to introduce Elizabeth Fields from McBride Dale Clarion, the consultant for the um, County Development Ordinance. And so um, with that, Ms. Nestor Jellen, our Director of Planning, would you kindly uh, take over a review of the CDO? Sure. Thank you. And thank you for that introduction. Liz is also going to be helping me go through the quick PowerPoint we have for everyone tonight. So we're hoping to focus in on um, public engagement one-on-one -on -one with you all here. So I do appreciate your attendance either in person or online. So I just wanna go over uh, quickly where we are at in the process of the County Development Ordinance. 
The items in red have been substantially drafted. So uh, we've gone over basic provisions, the zoning districts, the use tables and special uses, uh, subdivision standards, administration and definitions. Yet to be drafted um, will be the design standards. So we're working on like lot size information. We're also working on development standards that could be landscaping, parking standards, open space, and then also our overlays and special districts. We're trying to make sure those are in the best spot possible for us to uh, really set out to the public. But those will be either in the latter half of module two, which we're currently in, or module three. Um, and the timeline for this is we're hoping that by the end of next year, we could really be seeing some progress with um, all of the drafts being completed, put together, um, feedback included, and potentially uh, even notice going out, scheduling the date of a, a hearing. Tonight's meeting, we're really focusing in on the use table and special uses, as well as the definitions. Um, we do have our four planners here uh, to help and they can raise their hands real fast and you can see them here in the in the room. Um, so they're gonna be helping everyone individually um, on which properties they wanna go through and what the proposed and existing uses are um, in the zoning ordinance. So why do we need the county development ordinance? Uh, the last entire update of the ordinance was in 1997. And since then we've made piecemeal edits. So we're trying to come up to code with uh, state statute changes, modernize our use list, consolidate things that could be consolidated. The number of zones is reducing from 45 to 16 as currently proposed, which will make it a little bit clearer and easier for the public to, to use. And then the number of uses will be consolidated from 372 to 174. We're not proposing on getting rid of those uses. They'll actually just be consolidated and updated to a more, um, a better use that will be able to uh, go over each of those individual uses that are consolidated. And we wanted to touch base on um, kind of remind everybody what some of the goals of this update were. And, you know, part of that is this one not working. Okay. <laughs> like um, and part of that is to reorganize, consolidate, and reformat the code. So that's coming through um, very clearly in the consolidated zoning districts and the consolidated uses. Um, you'll see in our proposed update that we are updating the format, trying to make the tables easier to read, the whole code easier to read and use. Um, streamlined uses and regulations. We're looking at all of those updating, uh, continuously looking and updating those use standards. That's part of our process now. Um, improve the usability of the CDO um, as we go through. The flow of it's gonna be a lot clearer. The usability of it, uh, we'll, we'll be inserting um, hyperlinks throughout. Uh, we'll be looking at some other ways to make the code really user-friendly for both staff and the public. Um, and then as we're drafting, we are also tracking important changes and footnotes in the code. Those will be deleted once the code is adopted, but we will keep those footnotes in there um, until that point. Um, and then this is sort of an example of, of one of the uses that we are taking and consolidating. So you can see here, there's what, like 10 uh, different agricultural uses that we're proposing to consolidate into agricultural traditional. Um, and you can see very specific uses like horse farm and stockyard and, um, you know, those Christmas tree farm that they're all agricultural uses. So that's that's part of, you know, how we're trying to consolidate and streamline the, the process. Okay. And so um, I want to explain for everyone that's here tonight, we will be giving handouts, but also for those attending virtually, how you're going to navigate the draft CDO in order to give us feedback. So if you're here in person, out in the hallway, uh, you will be you will see a setup for an exercise to see what your proposed zoning is and what your current zoning is. We will have a form for you to fill out to keep track of that, and then we will organize you by those proposed zoning districts to help um, have the conversation be a little more specific to your needs. If you are joining us virtually, um, it's going to involve you going to MonroeCDO.com. 
the homepage will have a, a tab called maps. And in the maps tab, you will find the draft zoning map. The map should be uh, fairly easy for you to type in your address in the upper left-hand corner. And when you click on your property, once your address is populated, um, you'll see a pop-up that looks like the middle of the screen with um, the Monroe County Development Ordinance 2022. It will show your address, parcel number, and then most importantly, your proposed zoning code and your current zoning code. So um, that information does pop up there automatically, as well as the feedback survey, which is something that we're going to work through with people here with us in person tonight, but also something you can do um, virtually. I was going to see if this one worked. Hello? No. <laughs> um, and we wanted to kind of give an update and an overview on kind of your current use table and the proposed use table to make sure kind of everyone understands um, how the use table works. This is a screenshot of your existing use table. Um, you can see some examples of how you have some very specific uses and how those are going to be consolidated. Um, there, you can see the P and the C in the code. Those are for permitted uses and conditional uses. Um, and then you'll see in the new code that we're going to bring in permitted with standards. Currently, if a use has standards, there's a number in the conditions uh, column, that last column in the table. And so it's not as user friendly when you just look at this code to understand if a use has conditions because all those P's are the same. Um, so kind of comparing that to the proposed code. Um, so this is the, a screenshot of the proposed uh, use table. And um, part of the usability we have at the top, and this will be at the top of every page, we have color coded and grouped the different zoning districts. So they are grouped under rural, residential, um, the institutional public is kind of its own thing. So is the airport, uh, but then business and industrial. Those colors are going to correspond to we're doing kind of those two page spreads for each zoning district. Those will also have that color so that as you're flipping through, you'll kind of understand, oh, OK, I'm in the, you know, the rural section. I'm in the residential section. So another example of how we're trying to kind of improve that usability. Uh, we're also grouping. Uh, uses clearly by category. So here you can see the general use category and the ag agricultural use category. Um, and then the uses are going to be alphabetical under those. Um, as you can see previously to your current table, we have the P is for permitted uses, the C is for conditional, but we're adding in a PS and that is for permitted with standards. Um, so if a use has use specific standards, um, it'll show up as a PS, and then in the reference column, that last column, currently you're using number references. Right now, we just have Ys. Those will be changed to hyperlink code sections, um, so it'll take you right to that code section if you're interested in those use standards. The Ys are just placeholders because it's ridiculously hard to... Um, word can be finicky, and so doing the hyperlinks at the end makes it a lot more uh, streamlined for us. Oh, and then if it's a blank box, it means that it's a not permitted use. Um, and we wanted to also provide kind of an update on some of the use and use standards. This is an example of an existing use that you have in your code, equine services. Currently, it's permitted in ag and has no uh, specific use standards. Um, in the proposed code, we are proposing for that use to, to be equine services and stables and permitted with standards in the Ag 2.5 zone, which is the corresponding um, zone from the old code to the new code. But then here are the kind of the draft conditions that we're proposing for that use. So this, you know, this is just an example of where staff has identified issues with some, you know, uses being fuzzy or, or you know, realizing that it would be helpful to have some conditions. Those are being brought in um, again to make make the code clearer and easier to implement. And just to kind of give uh, people both virtually and in person an idea of what we're looking for today, we have put up some kind of 
prompt things and, and questions for you to think about as you go through the activity um, in the hallway or again, uh, virtually. You know, we're looking for feedback on, um, you know, if your zoning district is changing, are you satisfied with that? Are you concerned about that? You know, do you have specific comments there? Um, are there any uses in your uh, district that you're concerned with? Or are there use standards that, you know, is there a use that you think should be permitted instead of conditional or vice versa? Or are there use standards that you think are necessary for a certain use? Um, you know, are there different, you know, is there a use that you think is missing from the table? Um, does anything confuse you that you would like explained? You know, are there specific things that you like? Those are just some ideas to get you started. Obviously, we're open to, you know, whatever feedback you have, but we're looking for, you know, kind of whatever feedback on the general uses and um, districts tonight. Okay, and then how we will want to uh, have you submit your comments and how we'll use your comments is also important. So um, we've asked to uh, have input in by the end of January just to sort of provide some timeline for the public to get those comments in and so that we can keep drafting this module too. Um, where you can get to this public survey, which is the main form of um, putting in your comments is online, either through the feedback survey, or if you're here in person, we also have printouts and we will go ahead and accept those at the end of today's meeting. And we can also have anyone call in that wants to um, do this over the phone with us or over email. Um, I'll have a contact slide up in a, just a few minutes. But basically, if you fill out the uh, survey, it's just a few questions. And if you say that you're strongly dissatisfied with your zoning district, for instance, what we're going to do is take that through uh, an informal process with the subcommittees of the plan commission and try to notify you along the way of some of the progress or, or some staff reasonings as to we want to respond to each person's comment, basically. Um, so we want to make sure that you feel involved in and in what the proposed zoning is, what the current zoning is. And then at the end, um, ultimately during the hearing process, if that zoning has not changed and we have contacted you and you still disagree, of course, there's going to be time periods for public hearings at the plan commission level. And then ultimately the county commissioners um, will also receive that input for you to um, be able to see that through. So the county development ordinance does include the zoning map changes, the zoning ordinance changes, and the subdivision control ordinance changes. So that's what we're trying to um, have covered by this. So um, just lastly, we wanna make sure that everyone can stay involved and ask questions throughout the process. So our MonroeCDO.com website has a public input page. If you fill that out, you will be added to our listserv if you'd like to be contacted that way. Um, tonight, we're not gonna be taking formal public comment since this is an administrative item. We'd rather prioritize the time one-on-one -on -one with you out in the rotunda area um, to be able to get uh, to know what your current zoning is, what your proposed zoning is, and what your individualized comments are based on that. Um, we think that will be very uh, productive for tonight. And then if you're online or if you have questions, um, I've also put on the screen our phone number. We have a planner of the day, Monday through Friday, eight to four. We'd be happy to talk with you about your individual property or areas that you would like to talk to us about um, in person or over the phone or via email. So yeah, welcome to contact us in a variety of ways and hopefully um, everyone stays tuned as we uh, keep going through this process. So at this point, I'd like to take any questions or comments from the plan commission regarding the draft two. And then after this point, um, I would propose maybe a, a recess until maybe approximately 6.30 or another time set by the plan commission so that we could give uh, the public time to go out in the hallways and, and do the exercise. Thank you, Director Nestor Jellin. Yes. And I wanna thank you for all of the hard work you've put into making this come to fruition thus far. So thank you for all of your dedicated work and to rest the rest of the staff, thank you. So I will turn now to members of the plan commission. Do you have questions for staff? Commissioner Thomas. 
Um, yeah, I, I think it will be important to let folks know um, that there are a lot of gaps right now. Um, I think um, I heard some from from some constituents who said, well, but there's no information here. Well, it's not done yet. Um, so would you be willing to run through the timeline real quick for the public so that they know when additional information will be posted and um, provide that? Sure. So um, the so we've gone through module one, um, which has been sort of the basic provisions, the administration sections of the code. Those have been substantially drafted um, as well as the subdivision standards. Um, and then module two, we've done the zoning districts, the use table and the definitions. Um, the latter half of module two, the overlays and special districts, we're hoping to have that out um, in early spring. Um, and then when it gets to the development standards and the design standards, um, we think that we could have that out probably by uh, late summer. Um, and that would be that would be the timeline for looking for those drafts. And anytime we have drafts um, posted, we're going to take those to the plan commission and we'll make sure that those links are provided on our MonroeCDO.com homepage. Uh, we also post it on our Facebook page. And then we also uh, try to attend a few public meetings to promote the, the drafts as well to make sure people are aware. Thank you for all of those public outreach activities. And um, I have a, oh, Mr. McKim. So I'm just to follow up on that and also to address a question from a member of the public that appeared in the chat there. The, so even, you know, once we pass the, you know, pass the module two section and we're working on module three, member of the public is, uh, you know, reading module three, they might realize something that that has an implication in module two. They can still make comments on previous modules to the very end. Is that Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I have two questions. Uh, one is on page 115 of the packet or page 82 <coughs> of the, uh, the revised CDO under buildable area, is it a change uh, from the current practice that the buildable area is only on uh, a void on slopes greater than 15%? Isn't it currently 15% or greater? It's 15% or greater, yes. Okay, because this says something else on page 115. Okay. It says greater than 15%. Okay, okay. and um, I have a, an observation. Uh, with uh, regard to the uh, uh, concatenation of the um, agricultural definitions, it seems to me that the 10 definitions are meaningful for areas because having an animal farm next to a person versus a, a crop field, those are two different, very different things. And it seems to me as though the more general is not as descriptive as the 10. And uh, I, I just want to make that as a noted comment. And then um, third, I would like to have indicated throughout these changes, which definitions are newly included in the packet? Because it seems to me that there are a lot of things that are included in this packet that weren't even defined before. So, um, you know, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to compare the apples and the oranges, so to speak. So thank you for that. Any other questions from members of the plan commission? I, I do. Uh, Commissioner Thomas? Um, it's, it's actually just a request. Um, I would ask that the next time we insert this into a packet that we just have one set of page numbers. <laughs> sure. yeah. And it should be the set of page numbers that reflects the index. In other words, put it at the end of the packet and and um, not number. Uh, it's just difficult to do. Sure to uh, to find things um, if you're not aware that there's two sets of numbers on that packet. Okay. So, thank yes. you. Yes. And hopefully, I believe, I can double check this. I think if you're joining online, some of the hyperlinks, yeah, the hyperlinks must have gotten transitioned out. So some of them do work, though, if you do click. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion from members of the plan commission? Okay, well, I know the public is here to talk and engage with the planning staff about this uh, uh, county development ordinance and they are uh, prepared to meet you in the hallway. 
to hear your concerns and to take down your comments and interact with you. They're ready to go and uh, we'll reconvene here at uh, 6.30 and uh, we'll begin with the regular business of the plan commission. Thank you all to the public for coming and being engaged in this important process. It's now 6.30 and I'd like to reconvene this meeting. We had a lot of uh, input and uh, connection with the community out in the hallway. And I really wanna thank the planning staff for having organized such a wonderful and interactive event. Okay, so I suppose we should uh, take the roll once again. I'm sorry, Ms. Nestor Jellen. That's okay. I'll go ahead and- We'll wait for the bells. See if that brings in Mr. Enright Randall. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and call the roll again. Um, Bernie Garitas. Here. Jerry Pittsford. Here. Jeff McKim. Here. Margaret Clements. Here. Jeff Morris. Here. Tron Enright Randolph. As in the hallway. And Julie Thomas. Here. Okay, so we do have six members in person in a quorum, and uh, Mr. Enright Randolph is in the hallway. So, okay, do you know if um, Ms. Owens has uh, joined online? You know, I don't. Um, I don't believe we had a response from Ms. Owens for tonight, and since it's an odd schedule, a week ahead of time, she. I don't know that she's able to okay. attend. Wonderful. Yeah. So the first item that we we only have two items remaining on our agenda. Um, let the record reflect that Mr. Enright Randolph has uh, re reappeared. So the first item is number one under new business, PUO-22-1, Whitehall Business Park, PUO, Amendment 1, Preliminary Hearing, Waiver of Final Hearing Requested Concerning 18.99 Plus or Minus Acre Parcel in Van Buren Township, Section 1 at South Liberty Drive. And Ms. Cresselius, if you would be so kind as to go over this with us and walk us through it. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. So this request is specifically for one parcel that we see highlighted here in red. We will also be talking about an adjacent parcel um, located to the southwest that's addressed directly off of Liberty Drive at 701 South Liberty. So I will be referencing both. Okay, so currently the property is zoned uh, Whitehall Business Park Planned Unit Development. Um, there's a large area that's all in the Whitehall Business Park and has been built out in multiple different phases. Um, as we can see, we're on the west side of town with uh, mainly uh, industrial or, or business uses. So the Whitehall Business Park PUD was created in the late 70s by the city of Bloomington. Um, this would be the an, uh, amendment four to the PUD outline plan. Um, this general area is designated as either phase five or phase six and is um, generally allows what they define as light industrial uses. Um, as you can see, this is a, a 1979 map. So the extension of Liberty Drive is not necessarily shown here, but this is the general area of the two parcels that we're looking at. So the petitioner is currently proposing to amend the uses of the one petition site. Um, we are including looking at that 701 South Liberty um, because it's included in the, the conceptual development for the future. So at 701 South Liberty, they currently have um, an approved development plan that was done in 2019. The site was graded and stabilized, but further development has been pending. So the proposed use for that site at 701 was automobile repair services and automobile automotive sales. Um, the petitioner is proposing to add the same automotive uses to the petition site. Um, it is kind of a flagpole lot, as we can see. So it has a very narrow frontage on South Liberty Drive. They're proposing to add the nine automotive uses that were added to 701 South Liberty Drive in 2014. They are also proposing adding a warehousing and distribution activities use to only the petition site. 
The petitioner's intent is to, in the future, possibly amend the two lot lines so that there is some overlap, and I'll be able to show a diagram that here in a little later. So this is a 2022 pictometry photo. The petition site highlighted in pink um, what was more vegetated earlier this year and it has mostly been cleared. Larger trees um, still exist. The 701 South Liberty Drive, as you can see, was, was graded. It's currently vegetated and is mostly grasses and small shrubs. So here on the left side of the screen is the current configuration of the parcels. On the right is, is the conceptual idea of a future lot line where we can see the two different uses of warehousing and distribution to the north and the automobile sales and repair service uses to the south. Um, because of that possible lot line shift right now in their current configuration, it would need to have a mixture of uses, hence the the amendment to the uses on the petition site. So this just kind of clarifies, currently it's industrial and auto uses on South 701, and it's only industrial on the petition site. In the future, it would be industrial and auto on both, and warehousing and distribution activities only on the Northern par parcel. So here are just gonna run through just a few site photos of the property. So this would be looking west out that flagpole towards South Liberty Drive. This is looking south. And this is looking directly east. So there's about 65 feet of frontage along South Liberty Drive. South Liberty Drive is currently a local road and does have sidewalks already built out. Um, the site utilizes CBU water and sewer. There are also street trees along South Liberty Drive. The property has multiple utility easements crossing through the property. And if development is pursued upon the approval of this amendment, um, the developer will work with CBU to alter the utility easements. Uh, both of these properties are located within the Sinking Creek and also West Fork Clear Creek critical drainage areas. Um, the stormwater team has, has looked at this uh, initially and they will provide comments if this um, amendment goes through and a development plan is submitted. So the plan review committee heard this petition at the November 10th meeting. Um, we had a a list of, of multiple questions. And I'm just gonna kind of work through some, some of that information and the responses that we got. So we requested um, that sign regulations are clarified in the outline plan. Um, most of the outline plan is in the original state of that 1979. Um, so there's a lot of vagueness and we're definitely wanting to see a little bit more information. We've requested that they add definition for the auto uses and they have identified that they will be using the definitions from our ordinance. We went ahead and added all, a list of the uses and our definitions and, and that's listed as exhibit four. We requested that they add a definition for warehousing and distribution activities and also include a list of permitted and not permitted materials and chemicals. Um, they've added the language from chapter 802 for the definition, um, but the owner does not want to restrict certain materials um, as they will already be restricted by the building department, depending on the type of construction and type of fire rating or required sprinkler system. The petitioner with the development of the property is pro currently proposing the idea of kind of a roundabout access through both properties so that potentially say a, a semi-trailer or vehicles could access off of so, um, 701 South Liberty and be able to pull through the warehousing and go out the flagpole. Um, so we've asked that they clarify how they might, um, how they might address the access if those properties are ever sold individually. So they've proposed um, creating easements through the properties. 
We've also asked um, if they'd be willing to provide an ingress egress easement to the county because the county does own a parcel directly to the east. Um, the client said they're willing to enter in discussions with the county, but that they were under the impression that we already had an access easement. Staff has not necessarily found proof of an access easement. Um, so we're going to continue working with them on, on what, what they're working on, <laughs> what they're basing that response on. Um, they have added uh, uh, that easement going all the way to the east. So, so it sounds like they are uh, interested in, in working on that. Um, we had a few discussion points about traffic and if South Liberty Drive could possibly handle, you know, maybe an increase in flow or not. Um, so the highway department did comment under the right of way activity permit that um, if development is pursued, the there would need to be coordination for the traffic signal um, and that an agreement would be needed to cover the scope of work and cost reimbursement. So that would be under the, the right of way activity permit approval if this is approved. So staff does recommend a pos uh, forwarding a positive recommendation to the planned unit outline plan amendment request based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway and Drainage Engineer reports with the following plan edits, which would be to identify total signage by square feet to be allowed as well as sign types, identify how an easement for through access would be to recorded, and confirm if use definitions would be applicable to the chapter 802 conditions. Does anybody have any questions? Do members of the plan commission have questions for Ms. Okay, Mr. Caritas? A couple quick ones. So on on your uh, recommended condition or approval. Bernie, can you just turn the mic on? Sorry. On your recommended conditions of approval, confirm. I'm I'm trying to understand if these have been met or not. Because they because they're putting in the easement to the county and they're putting in they're platting an easement through the properties. So identify how the easement for through access is to be recorded. That would be through the. I'm I'm trying to understand yep. how these need to be addressed. Yeah. As we move forward. So for the first one, they just didn't include enough information about signage. For the second one, we are not currently platting the property. They are only theoretically proposing a lot line shift in the future. So if this amendment were to go through with a positive recommendation, we would want to see that they describe to us how that they would um, record that easement because currently they're both under the same ownership. So something would need to be transferred in an easement created and recorded. And then the third one is worded a little weird, but under chapter 802, we have conditions for those uses and we need to, we want them to confirm if our conditions are also gonna be applicable to those use definitions. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas and then Mr. Pittsford. Yes, so uh, the second point here on the conditions relates to that roundabout access for two properties. It does not relate to the county's access to the property to the east. That is correct. So um, to me, it seems like we should have a solid, clear answer, not just we'll negotiate, but we. I think I would feel much more comfortable waiting on this um, until January when we have a definitive answer on um, how that access will be allowed um, uh, to the east um, for the county. We cannot strand the county, sorry, we just can't. Uh, so that I think would be really helpful. And, um, you know, and, and in general, I support this. I just wanna make sure that everything's done before we approve this, because I, I don't wanna leave things hanging. That may be complications later, that shouldn't be a complication. So uh, that would be my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Mr. Pittsford? Yeah, <clears throat> going off of what Commissioner Thomas said, can you show the, the slide that shows where the roundabout structure thing is that she was talking about would be? Yes. Because I've been trying to figure out the ingress, egress layout of this whole thing. And... Okay. So on the screen, I believe you can see my mouse. So ingress. Right. Um, be through the property and up around out through the flagpole or vice versa. Okay. So it's in, in and out. Yes. And there are just two access points then. 
Um, so, so 701 does have a southern access. Their idea to prevent any possible traffic issues with you know large semis or, or semis hauling vehicles would be that, that instead of any possible issues that you know we've possibly seen on like South Walnut, um, is to have the semis pull through um, and then no complications to pull right back out. Okay, so this the the development would include both the it'd be two separate lots actually because this 701 was listed, but this is next door to the 701. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I was thinking, but I was trying to get on the phone. <laughs> well, it's always hard to blow these images up, and and I was looking at that. And I just wanted you to kind of walk me through that while I was looking at. It. Thank you, Ann. Are there any other, are there any other questions from members of the plan commission? Briefly, uh, Mr. Garitas. Yeah. My point was exactly where Julie was going. It, it seemed like there were some questions that were still out there that we weren't able to, we either needed to address with a recommendation or not. And I, I was just trying to sort out what staff's expectations were. So perfect. I okay. Get it right on. And Mr. Morris. Yeah, just. Just one more comment on the easement to the county property. I noticed when I was driving down I-69 the other day that there's power lines that parallel I-69. And I, it's either on the county property or on the state property along the highway. But that just makes me feel like the easement to the county property is even more important, knowing that, you know, the utility company may need to get back there. That's a good comment. Yes. Um, and just thinking about this, I know that they don't have plans to um, include hazardous materials at this moment because of the insurance issue. And, and I'm just wondering um, something that Mr. Morris just said, um, because this is a drainage area, I wonder if we could, if we should do a, a condition, and this would be a question for stormwater. And I see that Ms. Thetonia is not on our, our meeting right now. But I wonder if stormwater wants to create a condition that if hazardous materials are stored, that it has to be okayed by the MS4 operator, just because of the location, right, and, and how close that is. Um, I'm trying to think back to the karst maps that I have in my head, and it feels like this is close. And I worry about that kind of material getting into the mm -hmm. the water streams um which would impact lawrence county more than it would impact us at that point but um yeah. so anyway i so i guess the question is would miss the tonia like to have that as a condition and if she doesn't feel like it's needed then that's fine i guess that would just be a question i would put out there before we hear this again i believe she has raised her hand is uh, is on if you would like to address that um, so Ms. Hi. Hi, this is kelsey Yes. Yeah, yes. sorry, I wasn't a, a panelist, but I, I was here and listening. Um, and yeah, so for all of my stormwater reviews, I look at water quality treatment, and I do look at the proposed land use, any um, what we call, you know, hotspot land uses, where we do have the potential for different types of pollutants of concern. And so we design water quality treatment practices appropriate for those pollutants. And so that'll happen during my plan review when we um, get a development plan. Um, and I can also um, take anything um, to the drainage board if need be. Thank you, thank you, Kelsey. And I see that uh, Ms. Lisa Ridge is on as well. And if she could be elevated to panelist, that would be great. And I thought I saw Mr. Enright Randolph's hand raised. I was just going to infirm that Kelsey was here. Um, okay. Okay, well, uh, if the petitioner, the petitioner's representative is online and would like to address the plan commission, uh, you have 15 minutes to do, talk to us about what you want to do there. Hello, everyone. This is Daniel Butler with Biden Family and Associates. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Mr. Butler. Um, yeah, thank you for hearing this and kind of working with us on different items that would need to be addressed um, to keep this moving forward. Um, as you are aware, this was approved on the front lot or the western lot. Um, it now has a different configuration. Um, you heard this a couple of years ago. 
with the different automotive uses on the front lot. And now we're adding that to the lot to the east. And then also the distribution and warehousing uh, structures that would be added to the lot to the east as well. Um, we have no issue um, with any type of drainage condition. Um, in fact, we enlarged the area that would be for on-site water quality and um, storage and not relying on the county's uh, drainage facility just to the east uh, so that we could make sure that we were treating everything on site um, and upgrading to current water quality standards. And so it would go to the, after that, it would go to the drainage facility, uh, regional drainage facility to the east. Uh, so you are correct that there's three entrances and exits to this site. So there's one to the north, there's a middle, and then there's southern. The middle is the one that would get the upgrades to the uh, light, uh, the traffic light there. And we're committed to uh, working with the county to do that work as part of this project. And um, I think the only thing I wanted to, other thing I wanted to address, uh, we are still under the impression, um, and I wanted to ask uh, Julie and Bernie that raised this um, issue about an easement that's going to that Eastern property. If we were able to show the, um, where that is coming, we believe it is coming from Whitehall, that right now the county has that easement to go into that property from that, that area. There's another drive just to the north of our northern drive shown on this plan. And if we can show it that, is that acceptable? Um, or are you still asking for an easement through our property if that, um, if that one exists? Um, I'm here for any other questions as well. And feel free to ask. That's what oh, he's okay. saying, it's coming off Kmart property. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry for the interruption, Mr. Butler. All right, did you have, were you finished or did we interrupt you from into your presentation? Um, I was finished, but now that you've pulled, pulled up this uh, aerial photo, that it appears that there, there was some kind of agreement and I don't have it in hand tonight, but we're under the impression or the understanding that there is a, an easement behind uh, I guess you could call it the Kmart property, even though Kmart doesn't exist there anymore, uh, that would go to that Eastern lot. Now, if we are able to show that, are you still asking for us to provide you an easement through our property as well? That, that would just be my follow-up question. And yes, I'm done after that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Butler. Uh, Commissioner Thomas, did you have a follow-up question? Well, I, th I think that would be up to highway um, and Ms. Ridge is on the call today. Thank you. So, so, uh, Mr. Garitas? The only thing I might add, Daniel, is it might be, because I thought that there was an easement coming off from the north through there, because I've done work in there in the past, but if you, you don't have that illustrated on any drawings currently, correct? Uh, that's what I was saying, Bernie, that's correct. I don't have that with me tonight, but okay. if I'm able to demonstrate that, that that is does exist, would that be sufficient or are you still asking for something on our property if it is there? I would I, be sufficient with I, that. It would be sufficient, especially because Highway would review it um, and let us know if that's really there or not. Yeah. That's why seeing it on a plot would be helpful. So I think it's putting us in a position where we can't say yes or no until we see what the characteristics of the easement are, probably. If you've got access, I wouldn't have a problem using it. There's no use doubling up on all that. It just creates more wear and tear and uh, uh, question in the future, maybe. But if there's existing access subject to what it actually looks like, and you know, if it's a 15 foot wide easement, that's probably not going to cut cut the mustard. But if it's something that, that that provides ample access then i don't see why there'd be a double up on that okay but again highway department i'm not, not stepping ahead of them but the highway department would need to assess it okay thank you for that helpful guidance mr garitas is that clear mr butler 
Yeah, and we have no issue if tonight's um, answer is to either move forward with a condition of showing it or provide the easement, or if you'd like to wait until next meeting, we are fine with either option if you so choose. Okay, thank you. Well, um, we move now to members of the public. Are there members of the public who are in favor of this uh, petition? If so, please make yourself known by either coming to the microphone in uh, the Nat Hill room, raising your virtual hand on Zoom or pressing star nine on the telephone. And there seems to be no one. Are there members of the public who are in opposition to this petition? If so, please make yourself known in the same way by coming to the microphone or raising your virtual hand or star nine on the telephone. No one. Okay, Mr. Butler, we return now to the members of the plan for commission for um, further discussion and or a motion. Yes, Mr. Enright Randall. So, yeah, I guess in regards to the easement, I was just kind of looking at some records, and I guess this is for you, Daniel. Uh, to the north, uh, the Whitehall uh, Plaza final plat uh, instrument number uh, 2019 does kind of indicate that that southern line that shares the property in question and the property to the north. Uh, it talks about electric line easement and uh, also I think, yeah, so I'm not really sure that easement is really an ingress or egress. I'm not sure if that's helpful information. Just figured I'd uh, provide that to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, if we're, this is going to be continued to the next meeting, is that our general consensus? Is there any other motion other than that? Okay, so we'll be hearing this at our January meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Butler. It's always good to hear from you. Yeah, thank you and have a good night. You too. Okay, the last item on the agenda is um, REZ-22-9. And that is the Powell rezone from PUD to Ag RR. This is the preliminary hearing and the waiver of final hearing has been requested concerning one 18 plus or minus acre parcel in Richland Township, section 16 at 7935 West Ratliff Road. And I think Mr. Daniel Brown will be uh, going over this with us. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. The petitioner is proposing to amend the zoning map from planned unit development to agricultural rural reserve to reflect the surrounding area, as you can see on the in the map on the left. Uh, in the past, the site was meant to be rezoned into a planned unit development, but the owner has not submitted a development plan to date. The impetus of creating a PUD was to establish an agricultural event center, which at the time was not permitted in agricultural rural reserve zone. Uh, but is now a conditional use. The petitioner, I want to draw attention to the lot directly to the south here, which my mouse is on, because the petitioner also plans once, if this rezone is approved, the petitioner plans to sort of combine those two lots and use them to make a four lot sliding scale subdivision. Let's see. If the rezone is denied, the petitioner will be unable to utilize the slot for the sign scale subdivision as the subdivision process is only applicable for the agricultural rural reserve, conservation residential, and forest reserve zones. Here on the left, we can see an image of the buildings that are currently on the lots, such as the existing house, which is seen on the right, existing barn, existing shed, and existing carports and driveway and septic tank and field. This was the site plan submitted for the reason application. Uh, here's an image of the barn, I believe, and an image of the carports. Uh, here is an image of another shed or barn on the property. And on the right is a structure I noticed during the site visit. I'm not actually sure what it is. It looks like it might be a broken down mobile home that's been basically reduced to a skeleton. 
Staff recommends forwarding a positive recommendation to the county commissioners based on the petition's compatibility with the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance. And well, the Monroe County Comprehensive Plan. Thank you, Mr. Brown. That was a very good presentation. Uh, do members of the plan commission have questions for Mr. Brown, Mr. McKim? Thank you. So the the owner no longer intends in any way to build an agricultural event center. Is that correct? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. I'm always happy to get rid of a PUD and, and revert it back to regular <laughs> zoning. So this isn't a hard one for me. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions for staff? Yes, Commissioner Thomas. Um, I did not see that barn when I went. So um, has anyone looked at that from a historic preservation perspective? Because um, that sure looks old. Um, and I would want that checked out before anything transpires on the property. Um, I assume that that white barn that you can see from the front is 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 not older, but it would be great to have our Historic Preservation Board of Review take a look at this property um, and before this rezone happens, um, just to make sure that, because we do not, we do not have very many um, of these older barns still in existence um, uh, in the county, and I would hate to see us lose that precious uh, resource. And I don't know if we can make that a condition of approval um, or if we should just wait. I don't know what the answer is. Thank you. Um, yes, I just want to assure Mr. Powell that he will have an opportunity to speak after we're finished with the questions from the plan commission. So Mr. Pittsford, do you have questions? Yeah, uh, Daniel, I was looking at the picture of the barn. Did you go up to the barn or did you just photograph it from a distance because I see evidence of power going into the barn and what looks like a concrete base. Are you referring to the white barn or the the, the wood barn? Uh, this one, the one that's currently shown on the left. Pardon me? Yeah, the one on the left. Um, I did not go for a look to see if there were power lines leading to it. But if you look on the left-hand side, if you blow the image up, you can see that there is a water spigot and a conduit pipe running into the side of the building and what appears to be uh, a concrete or a cinder block foundation underneath it. Hmm. Oh. So, I just want to know if you'd actually approached the barn or if you just photographed it from a distance. Well, I photographed it from a distance and then proceeded to the trail that you can see on the right of that same image towards okay. the rear of the property. All right, cool. All right. Thank you. Well, the, um, if there are no more questions of staff, the petitioner has raised his hand. And Mr. Brandon Powell, um, if, all together, if you're here with someone else, you will have a total of 15 minutes to address the plan commission. So um, we look forward to hearing from you, Mr. Powell. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Great, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for taking the opportunity to, to hear from us today. Uh, we appreciate all the efforts that the, uh, the, the team has put into this. Uh, really, in regards to the barn that you mentioned, uh, the comments that were made are correct. It has power, it has water, and it has concrete block walls uh, and man-made trusses uh, and was constructed uh, by the previous owner, I believe, in the 90s. Um, I've simply bought some locally sourced uh, rough-cut lumber to put on the outside to make it look a little nicer, uh, but it is indeed not uh, any type of uh, historic barn, uh, purely a concrete block under there with some modern windows, as you can see on the side, um, in, in a, a very modern structure, if you were to actually see it, plywood construction for the roof. Are there other uh, comments you have about the um, vacation of the PUD and the um, rezone to AGRR, or any other things that you would like to say to the members of the plan commission? 
I, I believe what uh, was already been presented is exactly what we plan to do. Uh, we'd like to build a new home uh, on part of the property. And in order to be able to facilitate that, we need to be able to subdivide uh, to sell off the existing uh, the, the existing home that is on the property. And, and, and basically, that's it. Uh, so since we can only do this once, uh, there's a couple other parcels that may be included in the, the future step of uh, creating a sliding scale subdivision. But really, we just want to build a, a nicer home on the property and not have to move. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Powell, and thank you for your <laughs> your application. Uh, uh, question for you. Um, Commissioner Thomas has a question for you. Ms. Yes. Mr. Powell, I'm, I'm sorry. There are two barns and two different pictures. So can you be very clear about what you're saying about the barns? Of course I can. The, the white one you're seeing now on the screen, uh, they just switched away from. The white one, it's, uh, I mean, that's a little shed uh, that is not bolted to the ground. It could be moved around that you would buy at any um, I don't know, side of the road shop you see everywhere. Uh, just, uh, I think it's 12 by 16 or something to that effect. So by no means a permanent structure. The other one in the other picture, the, I'm going to call it brown for lack of a better term, uh, the natural wood there, that's the one that I'm talking about that I believe you were questioning as to whether it was a historical barn. It is indeed not um, concrete floor, concrete block walls that I've literally just furred out uh, and put wood on because we didn't like the look uh, of the concrete block. Thank you, um, Mr. Powell. Um, I'm going to now go to members of the public. And if there are members of the public who would like to speak either in favor or in opposition to this petition, please raise your hand, press star nine, or come to the podium. Do you see anybody? Okay, so I bring it back to members of the plan commission for further discussion and or a motion. Mr. McKim? I, I guess I wanted, I just wanted to see if there were still lingering questions about the barn or, or have those been addressed to everybody's satisfaction? I, Commissioner Thomas, uh, what uh, is there a condition that you would like to add to? No, because, um, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I, would, I would take a look at that before approving a sliding scale. That's just a note to staff, but I don't have any issues right now. Okay, okay. So, so I guess I'd like to make a motion Wonderful. in the matter of REZ-22-9, uh, rezone request from PUD to AGRR. Uh, I move that we forward uh, this petition to the Board of Commissioners with a positive recommendation and waive the final hearing. Perfect. There a second? Second. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to send a favorable recommendation to the uh, County Commissioners for the PAL rezone from PUD to AGRR. This is RAZ-22-9, as well as to waive the final hearing. A vote in favor is a vote to send a favorable recommendation along with a waiver of final hearing. Bernie Gertas? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Jeff McKim? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Jeff Morris? Yes. Tron Enright Randolph? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Okay, motion passes seven to zero. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you, Mr. Powell, for uh, bringing this before us. No problem. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any reports from planning or the legal, county legal? I have one report, uh, which is just that we heard today, this afternoon, that we do have a new Purdue Extension person starting. Um, so they hope to start by mid-January, and I'm getting a little bit more information from Adi, hopefully tomorrow on that. Okay, thank you. We look forward to that. Mr. Schilling, nothing? Okay, is there any objection to adjourning? Okay. Well, thank you all and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you for all of your service and can't wait to see you in the new year.